I had a video up about something called an earth, earth inductor compass, and this is that device. Um, and I took the video down because although the concept is correct as I presented it, the implementation of the demo is not. Let me go through uh, why. First of all, I didn't just throw together a demo without thinking about it. I uh, took my compass out and I looked, compared that against my electronic compass on my watch. And the needles are in close comparison, so north is that direction, that's correct. And then I ran my compass around the uh, table where I'm shooting this. And you notice the compass doesn't deflect. There's nothing in the area that that causes it, the camera, the lights, all that stuff, uh, not a problem. I located my power supply off, way off to the side over here. You can see it's on right now. Can you see it's on? Yeah, you can see it's on. Um, it doesn't have any impact until it's relatively close. Uh, the cables are interfering. So there you can see it starts to impact at maybe three inches, about 10 centimeters or something like that. So, but over there, it's all okay. So I had planned on all that. I wanted to make sure I didn't have any magnetic uh, interference coming from my equipment and that all checked out. So what I did is I put together this device. Let's zoom in here again. Okay. And in the original design, they had an anemometer driving this rotor. The rotor spins in the Earth's magnetic field and depending on the orientation, it's stronger or weaker and therefore you can tell the position and you have a compass. So the original design was driven by wind power, anemometer here. I substituted an electric motor. I thought that the distance between these two and the orientation of these two would prevent them from interfering with each other. Uh, thanks to some comments and some second guessing on my part. In fact, if you saw the original video, it's, I kept saying, this doesn't meet my expectations. It's not doing exactly what I expected. Kind of was doing it. I mean, I could tell the orientation in the Earth's magnetic field, but it turns out that uh, rough guess is that the motor was supplying about two thirds of the magnetic field and the Earth was only supplying about one third. Uh, you can see that because as I turned it, it would respond to the Earth's magnetic field, just not as much as I thought it should have. And also, it always seemed to know somehow that it was oriented which way was north and which way was south. And I had never calibrated it. There, there's not really any way to calibrate it like this. So, yeah, one thing led to another. Uh, comments, uh, exchanged some comments with one individual and we were trying to figure out where it would have gone wrong. And it came back to several choices. Uh, one of which was like interference of the lights, and I just showed you that's, that's not a case. Uh, interference with the, with the structures around it, with the power supply, with the wiring and all that. But again, none of that was it. It just turns out that if we, where'd my compass go? I get the compass over here. That if this thing, even in the neighborhood, you can see it starts to deflect. And this is not even the magnetic end. There's the motor. And yeah, the motor is, causes problems, especially that end. So, um, yeah, I thought I had, thought I had the motor far enough away. So what I'm thinking about doing in my next demo is if I can't drive this by air power or something like that, that's, you know, totally non-magnetic, I might be able to extend the shaft far enough away. So that, let's put the motor here. You can see that if we get the compass nearby, it starts to deflect. But if I keep it the length of this brass rod away, about like that. Now if I move the, the motor around, the deflection is very minimal. So if I can figure out a way to extend the distance between the motor and the rotor, then uh, that would probably be an acceptable way to demonstrate this. So I gotta go back and redesign this thing, rethink it, how I'm gonna power it. But yeah, that's the reason I put up that uh, 
video and then took it down shortly after is because, like I said during the video, it, it just wasn't meeting expectations. Something wasn't right with it. Another commenter came online and just started, you know, hey, maybe you did this, maybe you did that. And after thinking about it, I went back, did some more measurements and found out I was wrong. And that's part of science. You know, when things don't look right, some of the greatest inventions in the world have been, you know, somebody looked at something and said, nah, something doesn't look right. I need to go back and re-examine what's happening here, whether it was, you know, discovering x-rays by putting rocks on some uh, packets of photographic film, stuff like that. Something shouldn't have been happening. And yeah, science isn't about being right all the time and it's not about being stubborn in your beliefs it's about uh, examining your mistakes and learning from them so anyway i hope uh, hope this was a learning lesson for all of us it certainly was for me uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, kind of unusual segment but again i'm going to put this on my list of redos and i will see if i can't come back and do a better job that's worthy of your views okay well thank you for watching